Hello, everyone. It's, uh, I'm so happy to be uh, invited, you know, uh, to this talking with you uh, today. I just want to go quickly about uh, what is important education, uh, my journeys, my journeys, you know, through education and my current job and the advice. Um, I'm kind of checking today and I feel that everyone is kind of checking, you know, with all these earthquakes happening, you know, uh, around Westmoreland these days, uh, since yesterday, it's kind of, kind of, uh, and crazy, but um, I'm happy to be here. So, uh, as, as I said before, I'm Jairo Diaz, and I'm going to start talking about what is important education. I just wanted to bring to your attention what's, what's going on in our, in our county, you know, in Imperial County. And you may or may not know some of these uh, uh, numbers or figures that I'm showing here right now. Our employment rate is high, it's kind of 20%, you know, 19%. And mostly because we are a seasonal ag sector here that is huge. So agriculture is kind of seasonal. So that's why we are seeing, you know, uh, these high unemployment rates. Uh, in terms of language, you know, there is a lot of people, you know, in families that speak uh, both languages, English and Spanish, so some of them only speak uh, Spanish. But we have a lot of influence from Mexico, you know, just living at the border with Mexico. Our uh, household income is kind of low versus the California, you know, uh, about 23,000 less than the median income that uh, we have in California. But one of the main things here is our educational attainments, especially on uh, high school diploma. As we can see here, only 68% of the people in the county get those diplomas. In the average in California is 82%. So we have a lot of people that is not getting, you know, a high school diploma that in 2020, I don't see that is that right, you know, because we have so much access, you know, uh, to education, uh, even in, in the States, even in, in worldwide. Uh, but if we go to a bachelor degree, when you go to a community college and then a, a, to a university and try to attain a, a diploma, only 14% of the people uh, in Imperial County are getting that versus California average is 32%. We are kind of half of that. So it's really, really low. So we are seeing that people in the county uh, we, is not getting, you know, uh, a bachelor's degree. So uh, that's kind of uh, who we are, you know, in terms of education and economics in the county. Other thing that we had to bring to our attention is how as the county has, you know, about 85% of us is uh, uh, related to Hispanic. So. We are seeing that minorities, as you can see in this picture, you see the percentage of people getting a bachelor degree uh, among different races. And here in the United States, uh, no Hispanic whites accounts about 63% of the population. And minority groups like uh, Hispanic, Blacks, and, and Native Americans are 30%. But when those groups try to attain a bachelor degree, only, two, only two, 22 22% of those get a bachelor degree out of the 30% of the uh, minority group. So it's lower, you know, so it's not proportional. And if you want to get, you want to see, uh, but if you want to attain to get a master's degree, meaning that you have to study two more years above a bachelor degree, only 13% uh, of uh, Hispanic, Black, and Native Americans are getting that degree, so even lower. But if you see, but you want to attain to get a doctoral degree, that means three years above, at least from the master degree, or five years above a bachelor degree, only 9% are Hispanic. So the Hispanic population, the Black and Latin Americans, are not getting into these science and technology engineering degrees. So there is a lack of, of seeing people, you know, from our ancestors, you know, coming to get these degrees that are required to get into innovation and technology. Um, so what is also important, uh, uh, get uh, formal education so that we can avoid, you know, this misunderstanding even today. You go to YouTube and, and, and search for, is the earth flat? Yeah, some, some crazy guy is going to show you that, yeah, the, flat, the, the earth is flat and the earth is the center of the universe. That's not right, you know, so that's what we need people to get further education that we can uh, have, you know, um, uh, take better, uh, uh, have better decisions in our lives, you know. And the other thing, as Stacy said, our population is so gro is growing steadily, you know, every year. Right now, we have about 8 million uh, people in the world. And by 20, 2000, 
is going to be 11 billion people. So how we are going to figure it out to fit all these populations? So that's why we need uh, inventions, people, you know, getting into agriculture and science and engineering degrees. So that help us, you know, to figure it out how to uh, fit the world. And that's what we need. We need you, you know, we need all your energy uh, to move forward uh, our lives uh, toward the future. So let me talk a, a, a little bit about uh, myself. So I, I born in Colombia. Colombia is the country here in South America. I get a bachelor degree in agricultural engineering from one state university down there that is called uh, Universidad del Valle. Uh, after that degree, I got, uh, I started working with a community college in my hometown and I was uh, uh, teaching courses in natural resources. After a couple of years working on that, I see myself, you know, just getting further education. So I find out that opportunity in Puerto Rico. You know that Puerto Rico is a US uh, territory. So they are Puerto Ricans and also US citizens. So I went there and got a master's degree on water resources engineering. As you can see in this picture, I got a lot of hands-on experience collecting water samples, soil samples, working with uh, models, uh, with computers, and those kind of things. So give me more skills, you know, on how to tackle issues on water resources. But when I finish that, I really want to get forward and, and get further education. I want to be the driver. And to, be, to do that, I went to Mississippi. I went to Mississippi State University and I got enrolled into a doctoral degree in water resources engineering. As you can see in this picture, the guy behind that is driving the boat, that was my mentor, Dr. James Martin. And as you can see here, I'm the passenger. So my goal was to become the driver. And to do that, I had to get a doctoral degree so that I can you know, drive myself and move forward my ideas and be more innovative and that kind of, kind of thing. And also be a professor in a high, higher learning institution. Uh, after a couple of years, you know, after I finished my PhD in teaching classes in civil engineering in water resources, I moved to this historically black college in Mississippi that is called Alcorn State University. I went to the Department of Agri or to, uh, uh, to the Department of Agriculture there and teaching classes in environmental science. So as you can see in this picture, all these kids, you know, African Americans, when they came to this institution, they have a lot of deficiencies. They, for me, they, they, they were not ready. And they are not ready to get into college. But this does the opportunity for them to get into a college experience. So after all these years before, and the lack of understanding of many things, I see myself, okay, we have to change, you know, the way that we uh, teach these kids. So my, my point on, at that time was to get a lot of hands-on activities, bringing those kids to the fields and showing, you know, what is science, what is the meaning of agriculture and how they can uh, get further information and, and be professional, you know, on, on art science. After a couple of years, I moved here to Imperial County. And now I'm the director of the Desert Research and Extension Center. We have this strong FarSmart program. Uh, two years ago, I got the opportunity to teach at San Diego State University in Imperial Campus, a renewable energy class. So I'm really happy and, and so on here. So let me go through what I'm doing these days. So as I said before, we are the University of California, the Desert Research and Extension Center. We are located three miles west, Holville, on Evan Hughes and Mellow Land. This center has been there since 1912. So the center is pretty much a, a place where all our pioneers came and moved forward, you know, the agriculture in here in the valley. So more than hundred years, you know, of research and extension has been conducted in this, in this center. So what I, what, what I, what, so I have two hats. I, I pretty much, you know, I divide my time on two different things. First of all, is being a director. And the second one is being a researcher. So what is a typical day to be a director? So it's pretty busy. I had to get and check my emails. I had to get uh, phone calls, Zoom meetings like this with my colleagues, uh, getting phone calls with Stacy, with Stephanie, with the center superintendent, uh, getting meetings with my uh, uh, upper administrators. Uh, we, we have to respond to upper administrators located in Davis, up north in, in California. So a lot of meetings, meetings with the stakeholders as well. We have to extend, you know, our knowledge and what we 
what we do in our center and, and show you know, what we do uh, to our stakeholders as well. I had to go to a staff performance evaluations. And other thing that I do a lot is to seek funding, funding for our programs, funding to uh, enhance our farm smart programs, to enhance our research capacity, to buy equipment and so on. And many times, you know, in, in, in here at the center, we have 13 people. And I guess three or four of them only speak Spanish. Three or four only speak English. The rest are bilinguals. So we have to help, you know, each other. And, and all these communications are in English and Spanish. So that, that's an asset, you know, that's what I wanted to advise you. So to get, and, and if you got the opportunity to, to know another language, do it because it's so important for communications. And what I do on my second role, my second role is a researcher. So what I do is I need to figure it out what are the needs. And then I need to find out the money to pay, you know, and, and conduct my research project. So the center provide the equipment and the expertise to conduct research at the center. So as you can see in this picture, uh, this student used to be at IBC and now I guess she's finishing at San Diego State University. Uh, so she was one of our uh, intern students in getting, in getting you know, knowledge about agriculture and so on. I have other students, I have students also that are getting a bachelor degree and even uh, graduate students too, so that they use our facilities to advance, to advance in, in, their, in their careers as well. Um, so I do a lot of lab, lab work or mentorship, as I said, and also I, do, I need to communicate all these uh, results to the community. So I need to be, so you need to be like, like today, the presentation today, I know that was uh, for high school students. So I need to be focused, you know, how to present to you, but if I'm gonna talk with a grower, I had to change the things, you know, because it's a different, uh, it's a different individual or group. So uh, that, that's important, the communication. So my advice, First of all, identify your natural talents. So we all born with something, with something. We have talents. That's something that uh, uh, born with us. Skills, skills, you can develop those skills, you know, but talents is something that, that is on us. So some people is, has talent, have talent for art. I don't have it, not at all. Uh, for sports, so I played soccer. Uh, for music and those kind of things, leadership. So you have to figure it out what is your talent, first of all. And then you have to be really disciplined on this. You have to be really, uh, you have to schedule and you have to set priorities. There is always a time for learning, a time for resting, a time for, uh, to spend with your families, with your friends and so on. Try to set your priorities is, is, is so important. Be persistent and work hard. Really work hard, pace, uh, pace, uh, pace uh, the effort, you know, moving forward. And don't be afraid to fail. Every day, every day, every, every time that I do something different, I may fail, but I had to move on, you know, move on. And as we say here in the Valley, échale ganas, échale ganas, porque hay que echar para adelante. And at the end, make your life spectacular. Just one life is one opportunity. So do things that make you happy. That's, that's what's so important. Try to find out that happiness and pursue it, working hard, being disciplined, that makes sense. I'm gonna show you uh, this graph where I can put together when you have a dream or a challenge or impact, that could be a small or big. How much effort I have to put to get that, that dream? Low or high? Let me show you some examples. Maybe somebody just eat a burrito and said, okay, I'm gonna make a walk, 10 minutes, just, you know, just to make the digestion. For me, it's a low effort. And the dream or maybe the, the impact is low because you are not, you are not burning uh, so many calories. You are not gonna burn all the uh, calories from the burrito, but at least it's something. It's gonna do another example. What about if I have, plan, if I have to plan to run five, 50 miles in seven days? So that's me, because when I turn 47 in July, I see myself, okay, I'm gonna run 50 miles in seven days. Why? Because I run four miles every day and I rest two days. So I say, I'm gonna set the goal to run twice and not have any breaks, you know, between uh, my runs. And I said, and I said that right uh, to, uh, to run 50 miles. That for me, that was a dream. It was a big effort, yeah. Every day I was so exhausted. Uh, also, I took vacations at that time. Uh, over one weekend, I just running, you know, for that. So I just spent the time running. <laughs> so it was a big effort, 
I run, I burn a lot of calories, but I feel really well, you know, after that. Another example, obtaining a high school diploma. At this moment in the United States, I don't think this is a big dream for many of us. It's an effort, yeah. It's an effort because it's gonna take 12 years to get to the diploma. Every day you have to take and do homeworks, take classes. Today, this, this time is so difficult for everyone. So we have some effort, absolutely. But it's not that big of a deal because it's 2020. Maybe for our parents, yeah, that was the big deal. But it's not that today, you know, especially here in the United States. But what about to get a doctoral degree in agronomy? You know, that you have to invest after your high, high school diploma, you have to get uh, four years to five years for a bachelor's degree. On top of that, two years on a master's degree and then three more years on a doctoral degree. So about 10 to 12 years, you know, uh, in higher education to get this. And why? Well, maybe somebody wants to create new plants, plants that are more efficient, uh, plants that require less uh, chemicals, you know. So at the end, we want to, uh, maybe this individual wants to, to help uh, feed the world, you know, on this. So that, that's gonna create a big impact, impact but the effort is gonna be huge because it's gonna be too many years uh, that it's gonna be so difficult to keep, you know, this discipline and work hard. And after that, you have to be more disciplined to move forward your career. So I just wanted to show you that example on, on, on an advice and just to finish and to recap on this on my spectacular journey through agriculture and natural resources. Everything started with a high school diploma. So don't let me wrong. It's so important to get that because that's the first step. And for me, that was in 1990 back in Colombia. My parents were so proud of me. But then it took me seven years to get a bachelor's degree in agricultural engineering. So, wow, that, that was a huge, uh, huge movement uh, on my life. And then I moved to Puerto Rico, this Caribbean island, and I get a master's degree in 2004. It took me three years, you know, to reach that, uh, uh, this master's degree. And then I wanted more. I was so hungry and still I'm, I'm hungry to learn more. I really like to learn more. I get a doctoral degree in 2007 from Mississippi State University. Maybe you may not know what is Mississippi, but it's in the Southeast of the United States. And you may not know that pretty much everything there is white or black, that the Hispanic population in Mississippi is only 1%. That so seeing myself you know, as a Hispanic and then get into a historically black college, you know, and work collaboratively with uh, black individuals. 95% of that uh, Alcorn State University is black. The faculty and others, 99%. Are, are black, so I see myself as a, really a minority. But at the end of the day, I just wanted to help. I just wanted to help. So all this journey from 1990 to 2007, it happens, you know, it's gonna be 27 years. If I'm, it's gonna be 17 years, sorry. 17 years, you know, to get my dream and to help people. And everything is also for my parents. Uh, Jose Nelbedir and Amparo, they, they, they gave me everything. I was living in a bubble down there in Colombia because every time that I, I opened the door to get to the streets, it was bad. So they, they really gave me the opportunity. So the other thing, I'm sorry to be emotional, but it does what it is, it's family. Family is so important and I jumped the cliff as long as my parents did it. And I did the same for my son, Santiago, Juan Esteban and my wife. Everyone is jumping the cliff. That's what you need to do. You need, don't, don't be afraid. You have to jump. You have to jump and work really hard because here in the States, all these efforts paid off. That's what it is. So I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity. Uh, this is my information. Uh, that's my cell phone number, my email address. I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity. Sorry for being so emotional, but I hope that uh, you can learn something from today, that working hard and moving forward our dreams paid off. That's Great presentation, goal. Jairo, thank you. So uh, I personally learned a little bit about your, you as well, so that was wonderful. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop sharing your screen. So we have it, uh, I have everyone muted right now. I'm going to allow you to unmute yourself if you have a question or you can type it into the chat box. We have a lot of 
thank yous coming into the chat box right now. So um, I'll, I'll gracias. appreciate gracias. your time. Um, I did incorrectly do the polls earlier, so I'm going to launch those right now. If you want to go ahead, if you have any questions, feel free to start typing those in the chat box. Or if you would like to ask your question on the computer, go ahead and unmute yourself and I, I'll allow you to just go ahead and ask those questions now. I think it's interesting um, when I meet people from other countries and you know what motivates them to come here and 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 to and what is what would be your advice about like foreign travel to students and how do you feel that that you know would help them to um, in their future as far as seeing how other countries do things and and that type of thing maybe no thank you so much Stephen yeah that, that's the, I really like that because things change when you leave, basically. Even if you just cross the border here, things are totally different. It's amazing, you know, how, how border can reshape the things, you know, and the people. Uh, but for me, it's, I'm gonna give you an example. When I moved to Puerto Rico, they are Latinos. They are, they are people from the Caribbean, but they are US citizens as well. So for me, I remember seeing Puerto Rico, the place for salsa. Salsa is a music print for us, and we play a lot of salsa in my country, especially when I born. And I thought that when I went to Puerto Rico, I'm gonna see a lot of salsa, but it was not. It was the reggaeton at that time, and it's still the reggaeton is another type of music over there. Uh, and it was a different, even though we are Latinos, the accent, the way that we behave is different. Uh, the religions, uh, the history, the background is different, even though we are Latinos. So imagine just when I moved to Mississippi, it was so different just to see, you know, whites and blacks, seeing all, all the complexities that are happening, you know, in that area, give you different perspectives of life. You appreciate the most. When I was working, you know, at Larkon State University and seeing, you know, all these black kids, you know, not ready for getting to school, being in the States, say, why? Because when you are not in the States, what you can see is New York, Miami, LA, and the good things only. But they don't see places like El Centro, places like uh, Mississippi. So you have a better perspective on your life. So you are gonna get first, uh, uh, first hand you know, experiences, and that's gonna develop uh, better you and give you in a better position uh, for career development and social development as well, you know. So that, that's my, my, my answer to your question. Thank you. So truly encourage, you know, everyone to move and get as far as you can just for one week, a month, a year, and maybe get back. Yeah, get back and pay back, you know, to your, to your community. That, that's important too. What is the hardest agricultural career and what are the qualifications and degrees needed? It kind of depends. It depends on your talents, depends on your passion. Nothing is, nothing is free and nothing is easy. It's gonna get some, some uh, you have to push yourself uh, and see your feet on that. I always have passion for science and engineering, but I saw agriculture so hard because I saw the farmers firsthand, but then I start getting more knowledge, you know, about agriculture and how agriculture is so uh, huge that you can get into different directions from farming, uh, working in the industry, working in, uh, in, the, in education, uh, doing your own business too, marketing, uh, selling things, you know, all those kind of things. So it's kind of depends. So I cannot give you uh, one exact, uh, answer to your question. Just see your passion, see what are your talents, talk with your advisors, talk with your friends around to see, get the experience with through Farm Smart. Sometimes we have these internship programs, summer inter internship programs, so that they can start, see, you know, you can start seeing, you know, what is, what is agriculture that gives you a better, a better sense, okay? Great. We have another question that came in. Uh, in your personal experience, what is the largest hurdle you've had to overcome in order to get where you are today? Wow. Was it living in, in Imperial Valley, coming to Imperial Valley in August? 
<laughs> for the interview, for the yeah. interview, for this position. <laughs> that was crazy. Still, summer is crazy for me here. I don't know. I'm, I have a big dream. Back, here. I remember being high school, and I took this national test, the, the, the entry test for a college. And I saw this test. I was checking the test, and at the end of the test, said, "Where do you want to go? To get a, what kind of college do you want to go?" and what career. I didn't know anything about that. And I just checked to go to the capital of my country. And I really don't remember what career I'm gonna, I was playing you know, back in 1990. But I saw at least that question asking me, where do you want to go? I say Bogota, but I didn't have the money. I didn't realize I don't have the money, but I have the talents. So I guess the hardest could be the language when I moved to uh, Puerto Rico to United States fully in English. I was huge, um, uh, but getting the opportunity to get graduate school in Puerto Rico and they pay for it. So I got an assistantship, meaning that I was doing research. I was working part-time as a researcher and uh, teaching classes, you know, in the college. And getting that set up for me to pay for my, for my uh, master's degree there and then in, 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 in Mississippi as well, because I didn't have the money and I couldn't make a loan because if I had make a loan, I had to get back to my country. My country is not that place, you know, where you are gonna make a lot of money and then pay back for, mil, for thousands of dollars. So yeah, financial is, a, is, is a stressful. Uh, language is another barrier, but I overcome all those things, you know, just figure out how to get around. So we are at the 30 minute mark. I feel like that flew by. Um, I wanted to thank you again, Jairo, for, for joining us and being our, our guinea pig on these ag career Q and A's. It was, it was a great session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, and that is it. Uh, thank you all for joining us and we'll see you next week. We're gonna be um, having uh, Brooke Latak. She is a uh, University of California Cooperative Extension Advisor. She does, she's a livestock specialist for Imperial County, San Bernardino County and Riverside County. So so uh, she covers a, a big area. So she should be an interesting uh, uh, interviewee as well. So thank you so much, everyone, and have a great afternoon. Thank you for coming.